In your son's situation, I would recommend that we go with medication. We can start him off. These side effects include mania, aggression, hostility, psychosis, homicidal ideation. At least eight of the recent school shooters have taken these. Uh, let's see. We've got Springfield, Oregon school shootings. The Red Lake, Minnesota school murders. And, uh, oh, the Columbine massacre. But uh, it's really up to you. In 1998, the National Institutes of Health sponsored a three-day ADHD conference and invited experts from around the world to participate. This rare video provides a disturbing glimpse of the event, one which the government does not want you to see. We have agreed that there is no consistent diagnostic test for ADHD. Our knowledge about the cause or causes of ADHD remain speculative. I would now like to open the forum to questions from the press. Uh, Joe Palco with National Public Radio. It sounds a little bit like you're saying that the definition is a little like the Supreme Court's definition of pornography, which is you know it when you see it. <laughs> no, I, uh, I'm concerned. I, we're we're, we're going to disagree, and okay. uh, I would like. Uh, any member of the panel to describe uh, a typical ADHD in terms of symptomatology? Mark, would you like to? Since you see them in your practice. The, the, there, I mean, I think the, the panel has been frank and, you know, the difficulties here are immense in terms of, of uh, um, these, I mean, <clears throat> uh, it is hard. It's very hard to know how to answer this question. These kids, uh, in in my experience, when you see these kids, um, they are, you know, several standard deviations different in terms of they cannot sit still, they cannot attend, they um, they cannot, you know, even when. Um, uh, they are as if driven by a motor. There are some good clinical descriptions um, of these kids. I think... As pediatrician Mark Vonnegut struggles desperately to describe the symptoms of an ADHD child, it's fair to note that he must have diagnosed and treated hundreds of children for ADHD prior to this conference. But on this day at least, Dr. Vonnegut isn't clear at all about what identifying characteristics are present in an ADHD child. Uh, I, I do, I think, the pro part of the problem is the profession keeps changing the diagnosis. We have DSM-4, the latest thing, but we have no, we have no guarantee that DSM-5 won't give us yet another diagnosis. Uh, but certainly, I think we have the feeling, um, again, this, that's not very satisfying, uh, and I'm sure somebody else on this panel should have and could have done a better job than me with this question, so I'll stop talking now. Anybody on the panel want to? When the talking stopped, however, it became painfully evident that the esteemed proponents of ADHD were incapable of providing a cogent definition of this mysterious condition. You, you go, go back, how did you end up on uh, Ritalin in the first place? Um, uh, the teachers thought I wasn't like concentrating in school, so they got me on the uh, Ritalin to help me. Oh, wow. So, so you hear what he says, who got you on the Ritalin? Uh, my grade one teacher. The, yeah, so, <laughs> so, so technically there should be a doctor in there somewhere, right? Uh, but no, I mean, I asked you guys this. I mean, how, I mean how, how easy was it for the teacher to say, hey, Cody needs Ritalin, and then, you know, get that to the doctor? Very easy. Is that on? Yeah, just a little. I don't know. Yeah. It's very easy with my daughter. Yeah. It kept him quiet, and she liked that. Yeah, so, so, so if you see what happens here, it's very easy in a parent-teacher interview, we say, all of a sudden, um, this, we, we get a teacher. Guys, I, I love teachers. My mom is a teacher, but it is just that easy. Who do you think the teachers get their education from as well? You, I mean, it, it's no different from where a doctor gets their education. You know, unfortunately, teachers, doctors, as if they have time to really, really go to continuing education to learn how to keep people he um, healthy and well with the right foods, with exercise, ask any teacher what they serve for breakfast at a school, and you'll know it's not the greatest stuff. You know, so they, they don't learn that model. They learn just what your doctors learn. Oh, they actually name Ritalin. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so how did you feel when you were on Ritalin for um, 
that was pretty much grade one until grade six or so, right? Um, I don't really remember anything since grade one. Like, uh, I just completely forgot, but there's only certain things that I'd remember. Right. It pretty much conked you out for those six years. Yeah. Yeah. How, do you remember how you felt when you're on it? Um, I felt a bit uh, depressed. Yeah. 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 And a bit not hungry. Yeah. What would a typical day be like when you'd be on Ritalin? You'd take one 7.30 in the morning, a whole one, and he'd be sitting on the chest pill, just staring straight out. That was it. You'd get another one at 11.30. Just, I don't know how they got anything into his head. I right. don't understand that. And it didn't come out of his system till about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the evening. And then he got lively, so he couldn't sleep. Yeah. And then they put him on sleeping pill. Yeah. Uh, ended up having to take three a night. Yeah. Which, 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 no one, which no one should take, never mind a 10-year-old. Yeah.